Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh and in this video we'll continue to learn about linear models. And here we'll look at Ridge, the intuition behind how Ridge works, what is L2 regularization, and then uh, we'll introduce Ridge CV, Ridge classifier, Ridge classifier CV, and look at a code snippet for how to implement Ridge. And in the next video we'll do the actual coding in Python. So if you remember the previous two videos on norms and ordinary list where we looked at this first part of the equation which shows the uh, uh, objective function for residual sum of squares that we need to minimize. What that means is we are trying to uh, uh, reduce the difference between the actual value which is y and the predicted value which is shown here in xw. So xw is the equation that uh, we have here where the parameters w are linearly related to the features x. And on the right hand side in blue we have the regularization term where the alpha is the regularization parameter. So if we increase or decrease the value of alpha it, uh, it in turn changes the value of w and as the values of w change uh, we can change the value of the predicted output. So that's how this uh, uh, ridge regression works where if you look in this equation uh, for ridge the norm that is 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 circle and so the points on the circle are the values for w1 or w2 that are used in the equation to minimize the residual sum of squares and in this particular plot this is the orange circle which is which are the values for residual sum of squares and thus we need to find an optimal point where this the orange curve meets the blue curve uh, in what it means as we need to find optimal values of w1 and w2 such that we get the uh, fit of the model which is not overfitting and which is not highly biased uh, which is shown such as shown here on the right hand side where the model goes through the data points but it's not overfitting and it, it does not have a high bias. If you are still confused about this slide I suggest uh, watching the previous video on norms. Now in this slide we have an example where the data is shown in the blue dots in the background and the line that is fitted is shown here on the first left plot it is the red line where we are trying to fit a linear model and in the linear model we have the line that is fitting uh, too tightly through the data uh, it is weaving through the data and so it is uh, overfitting that's an example of overfitting now on the right image we are using ridge and the ridge has uh, as we looked in the previous slides it has the regularization uh, term which introduces bias in the uh, bias in the equation and thus when we are minimizing for w uh, we are moving away from overfitting by changing the value of alpha. Now if we set the value of alpha to 0 there is no uh, regularization. Uh, here this should be without L2 regularization because we have alpha is equal to 0 and therefore the uh, plots look similar in both the cases. Now as we increase the value of alpha to 0 0.01 we see that the line fitted line does not uh, weave through the data set it's a smooth line that goes through the data and if we increase the value of alpha even further we are starting to get into more high bias area because as you can see this line becomes more straight uh, and it's not curved and it's missing some of the points that are down here. So what regularization helps us do is uh, find the middle ground between high variance and high bias. As you can see in this particular slide, we have the 
uh, plots that we saw in the previous slides up here and then these are the coefficients for each of those models so for linear uh, regression the very first one and the second one which do not have regularization the coefficients are very high and what that tells us is if we go back the this circle would be much larger and so therefore the values of w values that w1 and w2 are taking are much higher now as we increase the values for alpha to 0 0.01 we see that the coefficients are now constrained in a smaller region and thus the values of w are uh, the parameter w are much smaller and as we continue to increase the value of alpha the values start going towards zero and here as we can see these values are uh, overall they are smaller than the values that we have up here for 0 0.01 so that's the summary of, of what uh, rich uh, regularization does and additionally let's look at the mean squared error which is just the mean of the uh, differences between the actual squared values of uh, squared values of the actual and the predicted uh, output so some of that now if we look at the mean squared error for the first two cases we see that they fit really well on the train set which is uh, almost close to zero so the lower the MSC the better it is so MSC of zero would be the best and here we can see although this is low it's not uh, desirable because we need a model that generalizes better on the test or unseen data and therefore because this is overfitting on the train data it's not doing well on the test data and we can see that the MSC for the test data is 119 which is much higher now as we increase the alpha value to 0 0.01 we see that we significantly bring down the msc to uh, 0 0.1 under 1 and that's really good here uh, on, as a consequence we are increasing the msc of uh, train set and that is expected because we are not overfitting the train set so the msc becomes higher so the difference between the actual and predicted values has increased a little bit but that is uh, acceptable now if we continue to increase the value of alpha to one we see that the test msc does start to go up and what that tells us is that we are starting to introduce bias in the model and thus the model is becoming more rigid and it's not uh, fitting the data well so the msc is one of the indicators that can be used to find this and thus for regularization then what uh, uh, needs to be done is we need to tune the value of alpha such that we find the uh, best msc possible now what in case of rich cv uh, we can introduce the uh, cross validation that is uh, we take a train set and then one part we can section out a chunk of that data for validation so we train on the train set then validate on the uh, validation set then again go through that iteration on different folds and different splits so we get a cross validation as we are doing the ridge regression uh, if you're confused about what is cross validation I recommend watching the video on terminologies i'll put a link in the description below so rich cv has inbuilt cross validation and now in the rich classifier what it does is it converts the targets into a binary range from minus one to one and then it solves it as a ridge regression problem and after that it will convert the predicted values into the binary class uh, as positive or negative based on positive or negative predictions or a multi-class if it's a multiple output regression 
and rich classifier also has built-in cross-validation uh, by uh, with the method rich classifier cv and we'll look at the implementation of all of these in the next video so the general format for implementation is we import the libraries we have this data set we train and test and uh, for uh, the model we initialize it in this variable reg is equal to linear model dot ridge and we set a value of alpha and then that is fit on the train set uh, here x train and y train and then uh, that is used to predict the model reg is used to predict uh, the data test predict based on the test data x test so that was it for this video i hope in this video you got an intuition about what is uh, ridge what is l2 regularization uh, and what is the impact of adding alpha value or increasing or decreasing the alpha value on the final msc of a particular model also we looked at uh, uh, what is ridge classifier what is risk classifier cv and what is risk cv please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video where we do the implementation of all of these and again i'll recommend watching the previous two videos on terminologies and uh, norms or, uh, if you are confused about some of the uh, concept in this intuition video i'll put a description link to the dis uh, i'll put the link to those videos in the description below i hope to see you in the next video thank you